Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, we'll look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Aegis Second Ignition. This is a brand new game from Zephyr Workshop. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play and is a competitive game where you're going to build up your own team of robots and clash against your opponent's robots. Throughout the game, you can actually combine your robots as well, making more powerful versions of those robots, hopefully to do more damage and to take out your opponents before they're able to do the same to you. Now, this is the second game in this series and can be played by itself, or if you have the original game, you can actually combine this and mix and match them, making bigger, more powerful forces and all kinds of different things with that. Now, this one actually is also going to include three new modes in it as well, which I'm going to talk about some of these in this video. Now, in the video, I'm going to go over the main features of the game and then also show you a couple sample turns in one of these new modes to give you a good idea how this one plays. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow, be able to produce this content. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also give that notification bell a ring and that'll let you know whenever I drop new stuff. So let's head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. The first thing I want to look at is the commanders, as each player is going to choose a commander, and these will allow them to specialize their squad in different ways, as each commander will have access to their own robot, as well as their own type of building style, as you're going to see in a minute with the other robots. They're going to have their own card, and this is also going to track the amount of energy that that particular player has throughout each one of their turns. And you'll see more of this a little bit later in the video. And there's going to be a whole collection of different commanders that are going to be available to you, such as Ethriel, or Ashla, or Indrex, or Salazar, and many other ones. Once you've selected your commander, it is off to build your team of robots. Now the game itself will come with pre-constructed decks, so as you're learning the game, you'll be able to jump right in and not have to worry about creating teams. But once you're familiar with the game, you can tailor your team to your play style and incorporate and include different types of robots however you want to do that. And there will be some specific rules that will govern how you can build your team. But other than that, you can tailor it however you want. And there's going to be five different classes of robots, A, E, G, I, and S robots. And then as you're going to see in a little bit, you can combine these into different forms as well. And each one of these robots is going to specialize in different things. For example, with A robots, they focus more on attacking and other robots will focus more on defense or buffing or debuffing allies and all kinds of different things. So you'll be able to tailor your team really to how any of you ever you want to play. Each one of the robot cards is going to list the classes of robot that it is, along with the color of that class. Then you'll have the maximum amount of movement that robot can move during its turn, the amount of energy it generates, its image and name, and then the abilities and their costs. And each one of the abilities is going to work a little bit differently. From there, then some, uh, some robots will have abilities that are going to be listed at the bottom that will be triggered or will have specific things such as flight or all kinds of other things. And each robot will have in their integrity or number of hit points that they have at the bottom corner. And then, like I said, throughout the game, you'll be able to upgrade your, your robots or combine them. For example, with this one, I can combine her with another A-class robot to create this robot here. And this one generates a little bit more, has a little bit better movement, and so on. And then as the game goes on, you can boost them up into other kinds of robots where this robot is an AGI robot. So even more powerful and and then you can go to the ultimate robot where you're combining four different robots and then you can see there's tons of abilities and all kinds of different things making this robot even more versatile and powerful. So next I want to talk about the modes that are included in this game. There are three brand new modes included in this one on top of all the regular modes that you know and love already. So with this one, you're going to include a solo mode. So for those of you that just want to check out or try your team against an AI controlled opponent or don't have a friend to, to battle at this time, you can play against AI controlled bosses. Then there's going to be a number of them included in the game. Each one of them will have their own set of two special cards that are going to be mixed in with the rest of their AI deck. And then they're going to have their own team of minions, either ones that they suggest, or you can choose a more difficult team if you want to, to take on and hopefully defeat, and then you're going to battle it out trying to eliminate that boss before they're able to eliminate all your valor points. 
The second mode included in this one is a brand new draft mode. With this mode, for those of you that want to prove that you are the best commander no matter what team you have, this is a great opportunity for you. This mode will draft a, a semi-random team for each player, and then the players are going to duke it out as normal. The final mode, and the mode that I'm going to be showing at the end of this video, is the star point mode. In this mode, you're going to have two separate teams, as usual, going at it. And with this one, you're going to bounce from player to player, each player activating one of their robots, and then it moves to the next player to activate one of their robots. And you're going to continue going back and forth until one of the players is able to eliminate all of the Valor points of the other player. The other important thing with this mode is that there are no eliminations of robots. So when a robot is defeated during a round, the next round it'll be able to come back out. So you'll have an infinite number of robots at your disposal. But of course, as you lose robots, you're going to also lose Valor points. And then there's also going to be these different star points out on the field that you can take control of and then spend energy to activate. And that will let you do all kinds of cool, interesting things, including doing damage to your enemies, swapping positions with allies, being able to choose out of all of the different options, and many other ones, as you're going to see some of those in the video. So giving you key points where you can try to maximize your abilities and take out your opponents before they take you out. Moving over to the board itself, there is one other important part that I want to point out with the star points. So as you can see, there are two star points of your color, and there's also three star points in the middle of the field. If at the end of the round you control one of these star points, you're going to reduce your opponent's valor by one point per level of robot you have in there. If you happen to get it into one of your opponent's star points, you're going to, to reduce it by two points per level of robot you have. So that is another good way of getting your opponent's valor track down, is taking control of these various points on the field on top of all the other benefits. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is a couple turns in action to give you a better idea how this one plays. For this example, I'm going to use one of the brand new modes, which is the star point mode. In this mode, again, you are going to bounce from player to player, going back and forth, activating one of your robots during your turn. So this is going to give you a little bit more of a tactical feel for the game. So moving into it, I've had my, my two players already set up and we're ready to move into the very first round. The round is broken down into two phases. The first phase is the recharge phase where you're going to each player is going to total up all of their energy points on each one of their robots that is currently out there and then place their max marker on that point or right after that point. So each one of my players right now has 20 energy points. From there, then it'll move into the player's turns, starting with the first player and then bouncing back and forth between players, each player activating one robot and spending the energy that they want to to activate and do the different things on that robot's card. So moving into it, let's go ahead and start with my blue player over here to take their first turn. So they're going to choose one of their robots that they would like to start by activating. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the GLA 400 and activate that particular robot. So the robot can move a maximum of four spaces. So let's go ahead and spend that. Each space that I want to move, I have to spend an energy to do so. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that robot four spaces. One, two, three, four. Slowly working my way towards that middle field. As that robot has a lot of integrity, it, has, it can hold a lot of or take a lot of damage. So getting that into a point might be a good way of holding that point for a little while. And then from there, I don't have any other abilities at this point. I don't have range to attack. So I think that's going to end my turn. So it'll bounce over to the red player to take their turn. So with that player, they are going to... Let's go ahead and activate the ESSO 100. So this one's got a little bit of, of a faster movement and has flight. So it can move over some of the difficult terrain. So with this one, I'm going to go ahead and move five spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and five to end there. Kind of working my way towards that middle point. All right. And uh, again, I don't have range at this point. Though he does have a ranged attack, it's just not far enough. So again, it'll bounce back over to my blue player to go next. And so at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and move my commander here and she has a movement of seven so i'm going to go ahead and do that and move seven spaces one two three four five 
six and seven, getting her all the way up there. As she has flight, she can fly over that piece of terrain. So that'll help her out. And then she does have a range of three, but unfortunately, again, still nobody is in range. So then it would bounce back over to my opponent to take their turn. So at this point, I'm going to take a few turns off camera and kind of get things moving. And then we'll jump back in and I'll show you some more of the action going on. That way you can kind of see how combat works and all those different things as well. Before moving on, I do want to cover the star points a little bit more and explain how they work with the dice rolling. Now, I do also want to point out that this card here is a reference card that has been modified already. So again, everything here is prototype and is up to the change. And some of these might be different at once you get your game. So the, another key point with this is when you move a bot on here, and this is also something that would be very beneficial usually early in the game as well, maybe even that first turn getting onto some of these points and rolling and seeing what you get out of these can be really good. So let's go over these. So first off, you have, you're going to roll a die and based on the result, you're going to get to activate that ability if you're able to. So the first one has changed. In the For the first one now, you can combine with any ally, and the new bot comes into play on this hex and cannot score this turn. Number two allows you to swipe places with an ally. Number three is going to deal three unpreventable damage to a bot on a star point. Kills do not reduce valor. With number four, it allows you to move a robot on a star port up to four hexes. Number five is going to gain you five energy. And number six lets you select your choice. You could choose any of the other five results. All right, so moving back in, we've had some things started to heat up. I got some of my guys into position. My player over here lost a couple of Valor points because the enemy has controlled those two center point, or the center point and that one point over there. But we'll see what happens during this round. So again, moving into the round, we generate our, our points, which I already took care of, and then we're back into the action, and it's going to move back over to my blue player to start off the round. So with this player, I have taken a number of damage with both of these particular robots and if one of the other players are I obviously play that player is going to activate and probably pound one or both of these robots so I definitely don't want that to happen so I think I'm going to start off with combining my robots so first off I have to move one of them to get in a range so I'm going to go ahead and activate this guy here and spend one to move him over that way then they're next to each other and then I'm going to go ahead and combine them into this echo 2222 and in order to do that, I have to spend six energy. So that'll drop me down to 13. And then I remove these two and replace one of them with this, with the upgraded token. And then I can choose one of those two slots to go in. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that slot there. Now, from there, then this robot has a special ability that's activated when it is combined. So this is a super blitz. After this robot combines with any, uh, combines, any other ally may immediately move for free. So, <clears throat> and then these two would lose all of their hit points. So they will not be eliminated then and I won't lose any points for them. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose another ally to move, which I think I'm gonna move the armor here. And this guy is one, two, three, four spaces away. So now he has control of that star point. And if he can hold on to it until the end of the round, he is going to drop the opponent by two points for that one. So that would be really helpful if we can pull that off. All right, so from there, then that is pretty much all I can do during my turn as of right now. So it's gonna move over to my opponent to take their turn. So my opponent is gonna go ahead and activate my his robot here and trigger those abilities. So first off, he is going to go ahead and spend one energy to activate this one here, which is the Crusher Knuckle. This one is going to have him rolling one die. If he rolls a three or higher, it's gonna do two damage at range one and he does so it's going to do two damage to that bot that i just built so she's got two on her ready and it's going to place a rust token on her as well next he's going to go ahead and activate the uh, burning pile driver and the only reason he can do this is he has overload this robot may use both of its actions if it hasn't moved this activation so he is extremely deadly if he doesn't move all right and he rolled a two so we got lucky there no extra damage on that one and that would have caused blaze as well so that is his turn but he can also spend one energy to activate the star point that he's on this is going to have him roll a die 
and he rolled a three, which allows him to do three damage to uh, another per, uh, unpreventable damage to another bot on a star point. So he's going to go ahead and hit that guy there and do three to him. So that's really, really bad news for our players. Now, if the enemy can get up there and do a couple more damage, then he is going to be taken off of that point. All right, so that is the end of his turn. Moving back over to our blue player now. Let's take a look and I think I'm going to go ahead and activate uh, my GLA and see if I can do some more damage to him. I just need one more damage to take him out. So I'm going to go ahead and spend two energy. And this one is going to do three dice, rolling three dice, and I or two dice, and I need threes or better to do one damage. And I rolled two terrible rolls, so neither one of them get through. No damage on that. Unfortunately, that would have been great. I would have been able to eliminate him. He only had one point remaining, which would have gotten me a or had them lose a valor point on that. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. So from there, moving back over as there's nothing else I really want to do at this point with that particular character, it's going to go back over to him to activate. And let's go ahead and do, hmm, what do we want to do here? He's got two, he's going to go ahead and go, he's going to spend four, one, two, three, four, I think, to move, one, two, three, actually only needs to spend three, and then he's going to spend two to attack. So this attack is going to roll two dice on fours. It does a wound. And he rolls two successful wounds. And so he actually didn't even need to move. He actually could stay there and pick up those three. And that will be enough because he has a range of five. And that will eliminate this guy. So he has been taken out. And I'm going to lose another Valor point. So I'm down to eight from that. And that is pretty much all I can do there. So that'll be my turn and it'll back back or bounce back over to my opponent. And again, this is going to continue going back and forth until one of the players has run out of valor points. At that point, the game is immediately over and their opponent has won. So I hope you found this video helpful in deciding whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them or swing over the Kickstarter's page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.